I'm Dustin Myers. I forgot to say that earlier. <laughs> um, I teach at Lambda. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Dustin T. Don't forget the T, 314. Uh, I don't know why I did the T. My last name's Myers. My middle name's Thomas. <laughs> so I did first name, middle name. I don't know. Don't ask me. Uh, I built a state management package using hooks and con uh, context API called Conflux. You can find on NPM if you're interested in moving away from Redux. I think that's a good way to go. Um, now that I am done introducing myself, let me take off this jacket. It's hot. Okay, my Lambda shirt got lost at the airport. There's a, we have one bag missing, so I guess that's a, a normal thing here. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about React Suspense for data fetching. This is a feature that came with the new release of React Concurrent Mode, um, which was released, the experimental, experimental uh, release happened a week and a half ago, two weeks ago maybe. Um, it's been something that we've been waiting for for over a year and a half, right? Almost two years now. So raise your hand if you saw the Iceland talk by Dan Abramov. A few people. Yeah, it was a long time ago, right? We've been waiting for this for so long. Part of concurrent mode, this is a, this concurrent mode is a four-year project by the React team to, with a couple goals. One of their main goals is to give everyone regardless of computer power, regardless of internet connection, give everyone a better user experience. So concurrent mode is, is about the user experience. One of the hardest parts of the user experience is loading states and fetching data, right? Doing asynchronous operations like that. So concurrent mode is going to help us do a better job at, um, at all that. So. Let's see. So we're going to start here. Um, we're going to talk about specifically how suspense, which is part of concurrent mode, works for data fetching. Again, this is all experimental. So we, this, everything I talk about today may change. Probably won't, but it may change. I have to give that warning. Um, so what is suspense? This is what suspense lets you do. Can you see, can you read that okay at the back? Okay. So the point of suspense, there's a few, there's a few reasons we have suspense. So let's data fetching libraries deeply integrate with React. That's, um, that's not what we're going to talk about today. So let's you orchestrate intentionally designed loading states. So it gives us as developers a much better developer experience to orchestrate loading states. Have, who's ever been involved in building loading states for your application? It's kind of hard, right? Who, who's thought about the edge cases like uh, um, maybe not showing a loading state if your data fetch happens faster than 800 milliseconds? Have you a couple nods here? Or maybe you have multiple data fetches happening and you want to wait till all of them come back before you show any data. Things like that. There's a lot of edge cases that are really hard, hard to solve for. And if we want to provide the best experience for all of our users, we need to be thinking about all those different edge cases. Um, and that helps us avoid race conditions. So we're going to talk about all of this today. Um, right now, if you want to use Suspense, the best way to use it is with the Relay, relay integration. If you don't use Relay, that's what we're going to demo today, but using Relay is the best way to start using Suspense. And we're waiting for more library authors like Relay to integrate with the React Suspense system. And I'll, you'll see what I mean, because we're going to cheat today. OK. So typically, when we think about building React applications, we think about we have our components, and we start mounting a component, right? 
and inside componented mount or inside a use effect hook, we start fetching data. That's when our data fetch is, is going to start. And after the data comes back, what we first recognize, the component recognizes there's no data. So we show a spinner. Then it starts rendering our data, and we wait and wait and wait and wait. And then at that point, the, we set new state with our data, and the component starts rendering under the hood, not even on the DOM yet. Under the hood, React can begin rendering the virtual DOM and then eventually get to where it renders on the DOM. This is what's called fetch on render. So, for example, fetch in use effect. So we start rendering components. Ah, we don't have to read that. We have less time, so that's okay. Another approach is fetch and then render. For example, if you use relay already without suspense, then that's what you're doing. Before you switch to that component, you start rendering your data or start fetching your data. And then once your data fetch comes back, then you can start rendering. Probably a little bit faster, um, but not, not the best that we could do. So what we want to get to is this part here. We want, to, we want to learn how to render as you fetch. Now this is, this is so cool. So we can start fetching all the required data for the next screen as early as possible. So kind of like what, what Relay does. So before we even get to that component, we're going to start rendering our, or start fetching our data. Then we're going to start rendering the new screen immediately. So React, while the data is fetching, can start rendering, start the rendering process in the background before we get a network response, before that data comes back. So by the time the data comes back, or as data streams in, React will retry rendering. It'll have the, the component set up, and it will render components as the data comes in. So a lot faster. This happens, the data fetching and the rendering happens concurrently, thus concurrent mode. Thanks, whoever chuckled. <laughs> you're, you're my friend. <laughs> so this is, this is what it looks like. So with, with suspense, uh, let's look at this here. So in the previous approach, in the, this would be the fetch then render. We start fetching, we finish fetching, and we start rendering. So with suspense, we still start fetching first. Then we start rendering at the same time concurrently, and then we finish fetching and finish the full render on the DOM. So we don't wait for the response to come back before we start rendering. Um, and this is what it's going to look like. So we've got a profile page here that's rendering two components, profile details, profile timeline. Profile details is trying to render user.name, but user is coming from our API. Uh, profile timeline is trying to render a list of posts, also coming from our API. But up here, inside profile page, we're going to fetch profile data before we start rendering our components. And our, and our children components down here are going to use this resource that's created uh, in profile page to try and read data from whichever resource, user or posts. If there's no data, this read function will tell React that there's no data. And so React will display a fallback component. Spinner, loading message, whatever you want here. Today we're going to have a, a, a spinner. And then once the data comes in, then we re-render profile details, profile timeline, and we see the actual data. OK, so let's take a look at a project that I've got up here. 
And um, so this is a pretty fun one. You can fetch shows. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's fetch Pokemon. We've got our spinner, yay. And then we come back with data. So how this is built right now, our show list is using an effect hook to fetch our shows based on the search term that we type into the input. So every time we type a new input, it's going to refetch data and show that on the, um, on the, in the app. Now before we start fetching, we're going to set is loading to true. And then we're going to, after we're done fetching, we're going to set is loading to false. And while is loading is true, we're showing that, that spinner. So we've got, again, the experience is uh, set loading, or is loading was, was true. It showed the spinner, and now it came up with um, the results. OK, so this. We've got some state here. We've got our effect hook fetching our data. We've got is loading that returns our loader when we're loading data. And then we've got our div that's going to map through our data. So this is how we write, currently, this is how we write React apps today. Who's, who's used this kind of flow? Is loading, uh, is fetching, something like that. State machines, yeah. Oh, it's gross. <laughs> we don't like it anymore. Just kidding. What we do is great, but there's a better way. Um, and we're going to go through that today. So where, sh where show list is being rendered is here inside shows view. And you can see if we have a search term, if we've clicked and, uh, search, then that sets our search term. If we have a search term, we're going to render our show list. If not, then we get our go ahead uh, add a search term. OK, so right here is where the magic is going to happen. OK, well, we're actually not even using suspense right now. We're doing the regular fetch data in the use effect, uh, render then fetch approach that was discussed earlier. So we want to make use of suspense. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to shows form, or excuse me, show list. And we're going to set up a resource here. Resource. Resourcer. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we don't know what this is yet. We'll just call it an object. And OK. So we're going to set up this magic resource object. And our resource object is going to take care of our, uh, our show list state. So we can delete that. Our resource is going to take care of our fetching. So we can delete that. Then suspense, the suspense component, is going to take care of our is loading state. We can delete that. It's going to take care of all of this. So we can delete that. Yeah, that looks good, right? <laughs> OK, so what we do need, though, as we saw before, where were we? Right here. As we saw before, we need this. We need to read whatever this is here. So we're going to say, as you can see, we've got the red squiggly line show list. We're going to say const show list. Let's spell it correctly equals our resource dot read. OK, we don't have a read function yet, so that's not going to work. But we're going to build that right now. Um, let's do, let's go look at, we're going to, this is the cheating part. We're going to do this without relay. So we're going to open up this code sandbox. And we're going to open up the fake API. Now, uh, let's see. 
Dan Abramov has said, don't copy paste this into your project. Well, we're going to copy and paste. Yeah. So don't do that at home. Don't try this at home. Actually, do try this at home, just don't try it at work. <laughs> there. OK, so we need to change a couple things here because our data looks a little bit different. Uh, we're not fetching profile data. We're going to fetch show data. Uh, we don't need either of these. This just let, let in there for their examples, let them uh, differentiate befe between user data and post data. We just have one kind of data. So what we're going to do is we're going to, oh, we do need the promise. We're going to set up a show promise. We're going to delete this one. And we're going to return an object from here, where we have to pass in our, our promise. Oh, there we go. OK, we don't need this because it's going to be an object. Very good. All right, so that's set up how we need it. Um, so let's talk through this real quick. What we're going to do is we're going to import fetch show data into our show list. Fetch show data. And our resource is going to call fetch show data. Like that. OK, perfect. So now this is going to return an object with a dot read function on it. So let's go see what happens when we, when we invoke fetch show data. So we've got fetch show data. First, we're going to set up a promise, but not from fetch user. So we can come down here. We can delete Dan Abramov's fetch user. We can delete fetch posts. And what we're going to do is we're going to call fetch shows by search term. Now, we don't yet have this built in to, to search by a search term. So we're just going to search for psych. Anybody watch psych? It's a US show. I think it's amazing. <laughs> OK, so we're going we're gonna, to uh, fetch shows by search term. I usually get cheers when I, when I show that in, in America, <laughs> but that's OK. Um, OK, so we're, gonna, we're going to invoke this function. And what is this function going to return? A promise, yes. So this, when we call this function, it's going to return a promise. We're going to take that promise, pass it into this wrap promise function. Now this part right here, everything that's, that they said don't copy and paste, this is what libraries are going to take care of for us. So we're waiting for libraries to implement this. But let's, so let's, uh, Let's see what happens when we call wrap promise. We pass in a promise. We've got a status is pending. We've got some results. We've got our suspender is our promise. Okay, so our suspender is our promise. Now, from wrap promise, we're going to return this object with a read function. So that gets returned to here. So this is basically an object, ah, small buttons, with a read function like this, right? So we can take that, that object that's returned. We're calling that function here. This turns into that object with the read function. So resource becomes that object, and we can call the read function here. So let's go look at the read function. So the read function says, if the status is pending, throw the suspender, throw the promise. Who's thrown errors before? Throw new error? Lots of people, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty normal thing. Who's thrown a promise before? Yeah, nobody. <laughs> uh, nope, that's not mine. Dan's thrown promises before, we haven't. So this is, this is, this is the magic that makes suspense work. When you throw a promise, it's going to bubble up 
just like a, a thrown error does. And what happens is inside suspense, the suspense component has a try catch block. Now errors that are thrown bubble up to some catch block and you handle your error. In suspense, they're handling thrown promises and thrown errors. So if you throw an error, you're still fine, you're still covered. When you throw a promise, suspense is going to catch that and it's going to check to see if it's pending, resolved, rejected, whatever it is. If it's pending, suspense is going to display your fallback and then it's going to concurrently start rendering your component and wait for the data fetch to happen. So when we call this function here, when we say show list equals resource dot read, suspense, a, a promise is going to be thrown, suspense is going to catch that promise and instead of, instead of trying to put this on the DOM, which would actually give us an error, right? If we don't have, if this isn't a list of, of data, we're going to get an error saying cannot read property map of, of undefined. Instead of, instead of rendering that, it's going to render our fallback. Then when the promise resolves, let's go look at it again in our fetch shows here. When the promise resolves, we're going to return the result. React will re-render show list or has been re-rendering show list. When the promise resolves, we're going to get our data and React will then show our component. It's mind blowing, right? It's crazy. Like, why would you even think of throwing promises? I think that one came from Sebastian on the React team. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can make this all work. So we're going to fetch, we're going to return our read. Okay, let's try it out. So let's save everything here. Ta-da! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's awesome. Remember where we started with this component? Use effect, is loading, the show list state, all, everything, right? If is loading is true, return this spinner. Now it's just this tiny piece of code. But we have a problem. Uh, we still can't fetch by search term, right? We just automatically showed the, the psych. So we don't want this inside our component. Let's call this, let's, let's move this up to shows view. Let's move it up a level. So we're going to create our resource outside of here and we'll import uh, fetch, fetch, fetch show data from API slash fetch shows. Again, this, this resource creator will come from some different library. All right, so we've got our resource here, but we want to read our resource here. So let's take our resource and pass it down as a prop. Okay, so we're going to take this, pass it down. We're not going to pass down the search term. We're going to pass this down. Oh, resource. Okay, so we've got to change a couple things. We need to be able to pass in our search term here. So we actually are going to build this resource inside the component. Here, let's see, we've got, oh, there's our component. Let's do it, yeah, let's go ahead and do it at the top here. Nope, we need, we need to do it below search term. Okay, so we're going to take our search term, if we have one, we're going to pass it in here search term. So that's going to be passed into here. Oh, okay, there we go. Search term. Then we can pass this down to there. 
now we can take in the actual, oh, am I, there we go, search term. Okay, so let's see if this works. So let's, let's go back and look at what we changed. In our search view, in our parent component, we've created a resource inside our parent component. And then we're going to pass that down as a prop to our children components. And I think that's pretty similar to what you'll see in the examples here where, well, this is all done in the same file, but this would be inside the parent component and then the resource would be passed down. Okay, so let's try it out. We're going to say Pokemon, submit, yeah, it still works. But wait, let's try one more. No, it was supposed to be an error. <laughs> Don't you hate that when you think you're going to get an error and it works? <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> the reason I thought it was going to be an error is because of Where's our next one? Because of this. So in the docs, the, uh, we've been mostly looking at page two for concurrent mode, suspense for data fetching. So now we're going to take a look at some of the UI patterns that we're going to uh, use with concurrent mode. What was supposed to happen is we were supposed to get an error Maybe they've updated the, uh, the code. But what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to use a transition hook to help us transition from uh, into, our, into our data state, into our final state. Um, now how this is going to work is we're going to call, we're going to use a use transition hook to get a start transition function and an is pending boolean. So let's go back to our code. We're going to import run shows view use transition. So we're going to import the use transition hook and we're going to set this up. We'll set it up up here. So our search term and our handle submit kind of live together. We're going to say const start transition, transition, and is pending. Okay, the use transition takes in an object where we can tell our, we can tell suspense how long to wait before we even show the rendering state. So for example, we've, we've found out that if your app starts, um, may, if you make a data fetch and you've got a loading state, but the data fetch happens in like 500 milliseconds, half a second, and during that time you show a spinner just because you, you don't have your data, but the data comes back really fast, it's kind of that jarring effect. And it actually makes your apps feel slower than if you had, just didn't even show anything at all. So the goal here is to, to handle the use case for your users who have a really fast connection, who are going to get those data fetches really fast. They're not even going to see loading states. They're just going to pause for half a second on the screen, boom, jump right over to the, um, to the, to the page. But your users who don't have a fast connection, we want to start showing that spinner maybe after one second or according to the docs here, three seconds. Wait for a little while before you show the fallback component uh, that we list inside suspense here. So we're, gonna, we're going to not wait three seconds. We're going to wait, I don't know, about a second. So we need timeout ms. So we're going to pass that config object here. I'm going to tell this to wait one second before transitioning. Now there was still a bug last time I tried this that didn't actually wait. So we'll see if, if it's been fixed. Hopefully it has. All right. Um, 
So that's good. Now we need to use this code. So this function, the start transition function, is going to wrap any function that kicks off a data fetch. So we're going to wrap it around. Usually that's your on clicks, some kind of event that, that happens. So we're going to wrap set search term inside start transition because it's set, set search term that runs this code here. So every time we set a new search term by clicking that button, we're going to recreate our resource. All right, so let's do, we're going to call set search term. This takes in a function. And we're just going to do this inside there. So make sure we're doing this. Yep, set resource. Or, so on their example, they've got a button click where they were getting a next ID from the resource and setting that here. Okay, so we're going to. We're now going to run this inside our, our start transition. So we're not just going to create our resource here. Actually, let me pause. Let's look at set resource. Ah, OK. So we, we got to change up our resource a little bit. We're going to say const resource and set resource equals use hook or use state, use hook. <laughs> and we're going to do this inside there. OK, so now resource is, is a piece of state. So we're going to call, let's see, set new search term. Instead of setting a new search term, we're going to set resource with our search term. So this, again, this happens when we submit the form, when we click on the button. Okay, so that's that click, that, that form submit is what we want to kick off our data and to help us transition to all of this. So let's see how this works. We click Submit. Uh, wah, wah. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ha. Ah, my other best friend. <laughs> so we passed resource. Um, we pass resource just a string. We're supposed to pass resource fetch show data with a string inside it. Fetch show data. There we go. Okay, so start transition. Oh, that was supposed to be here. Yes. All right, now we can try this. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's been past a second. We're so close. All right, let's see what happened. Let's refresh our page. Did we tell it 10 seconds? No, we told it one second. Okay, let's try this again. Let's see. I know my time's up. Um, new search term, set resource, fetch shows, new search term. Start transition. Maybe it's because we have prevent default. Oh, nope. We need prevent default. Okay, we missed one step somewhere in here. Um, I know we need to 
transition to our next transition. We need to go to our next show. So let's just look at this one because this one is working. And I'll pass, um, I'll, I'll, I'll share this uh, with everyone. So let's go to Pokemon. And you see there was one second delay before we showed. We still want to show a little bit of a, of a transition state. We want to say, we're fetching your data, don't worry. So you can see that if we search for something, you can see the text up there, then our loading state, and then our data. Um, so let's just take a look before we transition real quick. So this, we have start transition and is pending coming from use transition. We wrap our function inside start transition. So our set resource function is going to be inside start transition, which is inside the submit inside our form. So our form takes down handle submit and is pending. And on our form, if we're pending, then we show that is that loading text beside our button. Or maybe you can make a, a spinner inside the button. I think those are cooler, but didn't have time to build that out for this. So um, yeah, so it shows is loading. Then we wait for one second. Oh, this one is 800 milliseconds before we show our fallback spinner there. So yeah, I'm happy to answer questions, talk about suspense, love, I love React and, and this new stuff they're doing. So thank you very much. Sorry it didn't quite work out in our time, but yeah, concurrent mode, woo. <laughs>